So guys, welcome back. This is Val from Dreamlight. And I want to do a quick behind the scenes look video of my new music video, which you saw the other day, uh, which was AI enhanced dash renders. First of all, this ain't some, you know, one click push magic and the whole video is done. This is a whole process that starts with DAS. And I do, and I start with DAS for a specific reason. One, I love that, I've been doing it for 20 years. I have no intention in leaving that. Number two, because, you know, the thing I dislike about AI is the one-click thing, right? It's like you push a button and you say, hey, create a girl in a cool, you know, cyberpunk, whatever. And it ends up like something like this, like totally random, totally, you know, out of control. And you don't know what you're doing and you have to tweak it probably 10 times until it's right. And I dislike that. I dislike the random look. I dislike the tedious, you know, kind of repeat you have to do all the time to get it somewhere where you want it to be. So I've actually discovered a way to use DAS as not just a starting point, but also as a guide to control AI and tell it, hey, don't go wild on me. Do exactly what I say and create the stuff I want to have here, right? So this is a stonemason scenery. Then the ministry, you might have seen this prop. It's been out for like 20 years now, right? <laughs> uh, so I, I took my time to design this, to dress her the way I wanted, to add hair, to add lighting, the camera framing, the, the, the fog effects and all that. I wanted this to look in a specific way, all right? And now the, you know, the next step, obviously this, I took several, you know, camera angles, right? For instance, I had one that was just a close up like this uh, with beautiful hair and all that, right? And one was where she was sitting on the floor, the exact pose, the exact camera height and framing. I wanted, you know, being, coming from a cinematic background, being in, you know, I've been filming, creating movies for over 20 years prior to that in Hollywood and Europe. So I have this cinematic vision and style. I know how I want things to look like. I, I know where I want to place her, how she's gonna sit and pose. And, you know, using AI prompts for that is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. So it's a lot easier to just grab your DAS render, design it the way you want it, and then tell AI, hey, this is what I want. Now, by all means, you can skip the enhancement phase, which I'm gonna show you in a second. You can go straight to animation, but you can enhance your work as well, right? That's the pretty freedom you have. So you might recall this uh, shot from the video as well. She's sitting like that, right? And here's another one as well, right? And here is one with the lower camera, which I use a little bit further in, in the video. So this gives the, you a creative, not just freedom, but control to use DAS as a creative guide. It's like you're designing the shot, you're the director, you're designing it exactly like you want it, and then you let tech enhance it in different ways, right? So just an example, this one here uh, was turned, uh, for instance, to this, uh, which is pretty amazing, right? But it has the same structure. You can feel the pillars in the background. You can feel the exact camera framing, the exact same dress, exact same hair. And you can tell the software, you know, what kind of colors you want, what kind of mood do you want? Do you want to alter it a little bit or a lot? That's the freedom you have. But you also have control of the shot. It's like you're holding a camera that's AI driven. Right? It's like you're holding the camera as AI enhanced and you can do that with a DAS approach. So after you create your, you know, your vision and your kind of like a storyboard with renders, right? It's like you are setting the, the storyboard elements and then you can enhance them. You can turn your DAS render into something that looks like this. It has the exact same structure, the exact same camera frame. You can feel the pillars are exactly at the same place. And you can, you know, change color of the dress or hair, right? You have that creative options. And in this example here, I changed the, the, the whole look and feel, I changed the dress, 
color and also changed the entire environment but kept the same structure you can see you can feel the exact camera framing i was after right so as a you know creator for me that level of control is important I, again i dislike a push button that creates everything for me i want to be involved and i want to be the director and i want to you know tell the software this is exactly the camera shot i want can we make it more pretty yes please all right and now there are you know different levels of pretty or whatever you can do right you can change the sitting dash render i showed you earlier let's go back to that this one here right you can go all hollywood if you want and change that to this right that is possible but you don't have to you don't have to completely alter the look you can frankly animate your dash render straight off the bat just like they are you don't have to change the look right but you can and the different levels and options for doing that it can just be a quick enhancement Here's an example of a dash render that was animated straight off the bat. I did not alter the look. This is the exact same scenery you saw a moment ago. And I just, you know, uh, did an animation on that. Which makes her come alive, but it's it's not a, you know, cinematic, you know, uh, change per se. You can, you can, you know, animate your dash render straight off the bat. You don't have to enhance the look. And so the next step is adding animation. So once you have that still, you know, created, either as it is, just straight from DAS, you can skip the enhancement stage or just alter it slightly, adding filters, right? You can then animate it using uh, different other tools and give it more life. And that's, we also have a little more creative freedom of choosing and directing the AI and letting it know what is it you want. But it always starts with that base image you had rendered. That's the base for your animation. That's the kind of starting point. So with the starting point, you're also dictating what is possible to do. So that again gives you more control because you're just not just starting with whatever random you find anywhere, right? Or just create something random. You start with a specific camera angle and vision and that then comes alive. So that gives the AI uh, kind of, of, you know, direction, if you will. And from that, you can expand and say, hey, I want to reveal more of her as she's walking. Or I want her to, ju to just stand idle, right? So here's the same render I had and I just let her, you know, uh, let the camera zoom in slowly and let's just look in the camera. And that's it, right? So that gives you full control of the result because you create the original shot you direct the camera you let you know uh the the you kind of decide the angle of the camera the look of the lighting uh the entire feel of the shot you direct the camera how you want it moved you know and, and then there is you know music right uh adding music editing all together I skipped a step here of upscaling the images because you can upscale them, you can put slow motion on them, right? And the thing is, this then ends up in a video editing software, which is, I use, you know, Wondershare Filmora for this. Uh, and I just load the clips in here. There's a lot of them, right? And the, the thing with AI is that it generates a lot of errors at times, right? So uh, the, thing, the things you see in the video are like the best parts, right? It's like, the stuff you see here, those are the parts I chose to show, right? There's a lot of errors and sometimes when someone is walking, there can be some, you know, awkward things happening. Uh, people vanish into the walls and stuff like that sometimes. And by the way, here is an example of a shot that is more Daz look. It has its you no know, Daz look still intact because I didn't make this you know, with a complete transformation filter. This is just a small, uh, you know, enhancement filter, uh, and then it just animated. So this looks more DAS-ish, if you will, and you have that freedom, right? You have that freedom to, to uh, create stuff that look more DAS if you want, or that have a more cinematic look. And for me as an artist, that's freedom. That's freedom. You can go from whatever you are to design whatever you want, much quicker, much easier, and at the fraction of the cost. 
and you can have exactly the look you want because you're directing a right from the start you know just hitting some random buttons right this took you know several days to create if you put it in a straight line and you know so th this is you know all editing making it time to music right uh it takes time and effort right it's not just push button this one here you saw that she was sitting right sitting on the floor so all these clips are here and it's an editor and time to music and all that so it's a lot of it's a it's a fun creative process that gives you incredible control and incredible results and frankly i've never seen anything like this in my life you know like i said i've been you know in the movie industry for 20 years i've been doing dance for 20 years and I've never seen anything like this. It's just mind blowing and it's a lot of fun. It's fun in a different way because, you know, having been filming in, you know, real movies, filming with real actors that do not show up on the set, that uh, complain on the set, uh, that, you know, get into fights and all that, it's not so much fun. I've been, you know, uh, carrying lights, tripping over cables, a, you know, carrying heavy equipment, that's a lot of work, right? And I mean, doing 3D animation, the casual way, the normal way, it's like you have to have, you know, super render farms uh, or rent render farms. They cost like 50 bucks an hour to get somewhere near the speed you want. And you still have to pay like thousands of dollars to get just 10, 20, 30 seconds of animation. That's, for me, that's not art, that's, that's production. You know, when you're heavy, like a large company, you have the money, well, then you can maybe do that, right? But I th the way I say it, this is a tool that gives you incredible options and power. And it's your job as an artist to harness all that power. And not just let it be a button you can press, because this video was not created with a push button, I'll tell you that. It's all the shots you see here, all the camera angles, I chose them. Even the, the one at the end here, when the girl is walking here at the side, I chose this camera angle. I can show you that render right now. That's the render that acted as base for it. I chose this angle. I chose where the pillars are. I chose where the walls are. I chose the low camera. I chose her, you know, uh, pose. But now we have incredible tools at hand that let you, you know, I, make things faster, quicker, and more, more fun than ever, and without the cost. I mean, it's without the cost, right? And like I said, AI is not perfect. It's not just one push and it's all done. It creates errors. Look at this clip here, uh, when she's raising the hands. Look at her hands. They are, you know, skipping and flowing through the air and looking all weird, disappearing, right? And I have a clip, uh, I have a clip of an upcoming video I haven't released yet, uh, but I just wanted to show you that I turned uh, this girl here in the pole. It's also from a dance render, this one here. And you actually saw me do a, a, a YouTube video with that particular image, right? So I threw that into uh, a little bit of enhancements, but you can see it has the exact same camera framing and vibe I chose, right? So you are the director and I refuse to let go of that role because I think with the new technology now and AI, uh, by the way, this one here is a straight dash render. I did not alter it at all. It's, I just made her a little bit uh, more contrast reach in Photoshop and remove some of the shadow that was, you know, on the edge here. That's a straight DAS render. I didn't alter it. By the way, it features one of my own backgrounds from my own store, just so you know. So I think the new role of the new AI age is to, you get all the footage to look better. You still have control if you decide to have control. And as an artist, I want to have control. That's why I use DAS. And I want to use DAS to control the camera angles, to control the cinematic shots, to frame things the way I want to frame them, to keep everything exactly as I want it. Then I can enhance it. 
and the next part of it becomes to really use all this and tell a story right because now you have means to do that now you don't have to spend one million dollars to get all these cool shots filmed or created in you know in, in cg and after months of work you can be the director suddenly and you know create your own movies and have fun with this in ways that i couldn't even imagine 10 years ago this is like pure science fiction and it just opens up for some more, uh, you know, so much cool creative options. So guys, you know, I felt I wanted to do this video so we show, to show you a little bit more how this process looks like, that it's not just a, you know, push button because I really dislike push buttons. I want to stay in control and I think you want to, right? So if you want to learn more about this, uh, there is a link below this video and also you can just go to dreamy3dstore.com and we have just released new membership club that teaches all about this from DAZ to cinematic videos and you know all the editing and everything included so that's pretty much it guys uh thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time all right